Welcome back everyone. This is Leslie Onstead. Today we're going to do a frosted glass technique on a bottle I had found at Hobby Lobby for about $1.50 with a cork. I fell so in love with that interference look that I had gotten on the frosted heart. I decided to take it another step. This time I separated the interferences out. That way I could get a little bit more contrast between the interference green and the violet. And how I did that is I laid down a patch of the green, got that laid in first randomly, and then I'm going over the edges with the interference violet. I'm drying the first layer with cool air, not hot air. You don't want to cook the paint. Now there are two sides to this bottle. So now you can see the flip side from the raw. So this is the green going down first. Incidentally, it's interference green mixed in vivid clear enamel. And then for the violet, I'm taking the interference violet, but putting a pinch of the sparkle violet. It's a slightly larger particulate, so it adds a little extra glitz to my piece. Now I'm grabbing the violet. I know it looks white here until I kind of pick it up and let you see it in the light, but this is the violet patch going down. I'm intentionally letting this first layer go down with some texture to it. I'm going to stand it up and make sure I get the sides here in a minute. I'm loving those patches of violet and green. That was a little bit of green I ran down the side. If anybody's interested, <laughs> either color would work. Okay, now that's completely dry, I had decided I was going to try this stencil technique I'd seen Maria do in Sweet Willow Designs. However, she wasn't trying to use a stencil on a bottle that has an uneven surface. I mean, this is a pretty good surface, but it's still not flat. But I was so excited by seeing her stencil and then dot art she did on black. I encourage you to go check out her channel. I thought, hey, I can do that too. I'm starting with some Guatemalan green primary element mixed with the vivid clear enamel. Stippling through the stencil, trying not to lift it up, scoot it, skirt it, move it, just pouncing straight up and down. So here I started adding some Snapdragon. Actually, it's Snapdragon mixed with a little Interference Violet. It's not really that dark of a Snapdragon. And at this point, I'm not even done, but I already can see that my very, very light background, which I intentionally added, was not going to really allow my dot art to show up on the stencil. But I thought, you know, I'm, I need something on the flip side of this piece. The front of my bottle will have a different design and the back of the bottle will have the stencil design. And at least I get to show you guys both sides. Uh, if I had to do this again, I'd be doing this design on a slightly uh, darker background so there's more contrast. You'll see what I mean when I pull the stencil off. But I was pretty surprised how well this pattern actually stenciled through. I was a little bit careful to try to not get it too dark, which might have been a mistake. Make sure you grab the tape from all sides and then just try to pull it straight up. Don't grab it from one end and rip it up. You want to have them all loose and then lift straight up. 
there you go now you see how light that is compared to uh, the glass so this is where I'm like going okay well uh, I've got it down I'm gonna leave it it's an option so on this side I've decided to take some Guatemalan green and this layer, I'm going to just take that little bit of color you saw me put down and I'm spreading it all over the bottle. I'm not going to reapply it. I don't want this layer to be textured. I want this layer to be very thin. I want the color beneath to come through. And as you see, it will. So I figured I might as well make the whole thing look complete. So I stippled the sides of that back of that back end, not necessarily over my stippled design. I was just curious of the contrast of the Guatemala green against that area that was not stippled, that was just purely opalescent. More experimentation for you guys. Okay, so the pattern that I had seen this artist do, um, I'll try to get her link. She had a centerpiece that made room for a medallion or a thank you message. So I've taken my stencil. Uh, the link to the stencil pack is in the description. And this is a watercolor pencil. Later on, I'll be able to take a, a Q-tip with a little bit of water after my acrylic paint's completely dry. And I'll be able to just wipe that watercolor off. So this little medallion in her video, she had this area stuck down. So of course, I felt like I needed to copy her. Later on, you're going to find out this was actually a mistake. I suggest you don't glue it down. I'd use a little piece of tape. And all it's really for is to get a clean guide for the center round of dots. You can actually lift it up once that's done. but. I glued it down. Okay, so this first center area, I'm going to take the dragon gold. And first I'm marking on opposite corners. With actually my largest uh, little metal point. In your set, you're going to get metal points and flat plastic points, which will make you bigger dots. This is the this has got that round metal point to it. On the opposite edge, it's like a little rubber wedge that you can use for cleaning up any mistakes. It's pretty cool tools. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to use a smaller one now, different size. I think doing the center part's one of the more challenging parts because it seems to set the balance for your whole piece. Um, having my layer textured makes it more rustic. If you notice the surface now, um, the shine on that glass, as I turn it, you're going to get little glimpse of what looks like blues to violets to greens to turquoises. I actually love that texture on the glass. So I'm just filling in my first ring around. And if I was going to do this again, I would let it completely dry, totally bone dry, and then lift up my little piece in the center because I'm going to put a little decorative something there in the middle. Uh, once I lift that up. And like I said, it was a mistake to use the Vivid because it tried to lift up all the paint that I had just put down. So another one of the don't do as I do, do as I'm telling you. 
Okay, time for the first uh, bigger dots. And I'm going to apologize. I'm going to use my Lazy Susan as much as I can to turn it and get you the close-up as much as I can. The paint actually has a great viscosity without really being thinned down, and that's kind of the point of the video is to show you guys the paints that we make. Um, I am still learning this technique. I can say after doing this, and the bonus piece that's at the end of this, and there is a little bonus piece, um, clean dots, freshly put in the color every time, guarantees a little bit more consistency. Fortunately, on those bigger dots, I can do a little fix it with my metal tipped piece. So at least they look a little bit similar. Okay, next I'm putting, uh, I'm using my metal end, not the plastic end. And I know you don't need my commentary all the way through, but I will uh, when we get to the true silver. I'll be talking about it. I am so excited by the true silver because it's so hard to get a nice chrome silver. This color here is dragon gold. Some of these don't come out perfect, like that area where I walk the dots, but you just either commit or later on you'll see that I actually did a repair with my wedge. At this point, I kind of forgot I could do a repair. I think I was just so excited by the color of this glass screen and getting started on this. So if you notice, um, some of the patterns have that little circle walking the dots. Other ones, that other section has the three dots. Okay, now here comes the true silver. It's kind of a chrome silver color. So at this point, I feel like I've got myself a little bit crowded, but I'm going to try to space things out. And that's really, there's two ways of correcting it. You live with it and just correct as you keep going out and know that you're making something handmade and organic. You wipe it off and fix it. And I'll tell you, on the bonus piece, and I've mentioned it this is the second time, I redo this pattern almost precisely the same on a flat black piece of cardstock at the end. That way for those of you that wanted to see the actual pattern I was attempting to do, you can watch it again um, 
and on the black and and uh, with the silver and the gold it's abs actually absolutely really pretty I love how the silver and gold turned out on the black but that's for people that really want to learn the pattern and for those of you that might be curious to see what these two colors of the primary element uh, ground metals look like on the black I have given myself a rather large challenge trying to do this on a bottle that I have pre-painted with a somewhat uneven textured surface but uh, I'm making this as a gift for somebody and um, okay so notice where I pointed that since the paint is still wet these little tools come on the ones that have a metal tip have like a little rubber wedge on them and they've got different shapes so you can actually go in, especially on a surface like glass that's forgiving, clean it up, and reapply it. There's help for some of us that are still learning. See, even that I wasn't so sure, okay, was it balanced? Did I put it in the right spot? Because this is your one chance to actually fix it and make sure that whatever you're doing looks centered. Quite a few people have reached out to me saying they think this is stressful looking or they wouldn't have the patience and I can say it's actually pretty relaxing surprisingly enough. When you're walking the dots, it's like one, two, three, four, five up one side, and then start at that center dot again, and one, two, three, four, five up the opposite side. Okay, a little bit more gold now. I'm going to bring my pattern out. If you're curious where I found these bottles, I know I mentioned Hobby Lobby, but Hobby Lobby actually has a glass section with just all kinds of unusual shapes and sizes of square glass you can use for mot uh, votives, um, bowls, plates. I bought these actually in 2017, so I can't say for sure that I went down last week and they got it, but what I was looking for was glass that had a nice flat surface that I could paint on.
I'm in just in love. I keep going on about the colors, but every time I watch myself pick that up and move it, the layer of interference coming through on that turquoise is so pretty. I keep seeing, um, of course this would be for resin artists, but I've been looking for shapes of clear glass that I can do this frosted technique and then lay in the resin for effects. Maybe break and then put back together. <laughs> Call me crazy. I just happen to love this look and I can only imagine how magnified it would be under uh, resin. Now, for all of you that are curious, I did try one of our ornaments and dipped it in lacquer. I did not like that look. It took away that beautiful frosted uh, design. So I'll experiment under resin before you guys have to. I'm hoping the resin doesn't do the same thing the varnish did, but I really didn't care for it dip in varnish. I prefer the natural finish right now to putting any kind of additional coating on top of these just for as an FYI guys. Okay, so I'm putting a second row of walking the dots on my silver. pretty cool when you don't reapply. That's one thing about the walking the dots is as you're walking the dot down, the dot gets smaller and smaller when you're doing a three or four or a five dot pattern. And I believe that actually that happens because you're not reapplying the, the paint, of course. So there's less and less paint as you're traveling down, creating those dots that you're walking.
So here on the bottom, if you look at the closeness where the dots are walking, you can see a crisscross pattern show up, almost like two little tails coming off left to right. You just have to go down the same angle as uh, the dot at that angle that you walked or when you walked them around. I don't know how to explain it other than for you to see this. So after you do the three dots, you find the dot that was in the the first one in from where you walked the dot, and then you kind of crisscross back and forth. <laughs> I hope I explained that good or right. So I'm pretty happy with the colors. The pattern looks okay. Now with a Q-tip. Now the paint's still wet here. So I'm just taking a Q-tip with a little bit of water so I can show you how you remove it. After the bottle was completely dry, you're not going to have a problem with taking a little bit of water and rubbing anywhere the watercolor pencil is because the acrylic's not going to be affected by that moistened Q-tip. All you need just a couple drops of water on the end of a Q-tip and you can clean it up. Okay, so I already removed that dot and as I said, it lifted up the paint in the center. Bad move. I wish I had just taped it down. So what I'm doing is actually taking my Gold Vivid, the Dragon Gold Vivid, and kind of re-dotting that section that I first dotted and getting my first row uh, it's a fuchsia Swartzky crystal down. It's a little bit of a challenge. Now we're going to go for row two here in a second. But at this point, I'm going to take some of just the clear enamel, moisten the whole center section. It, it'll act as an adhesive. Most good acrylic polymers, like high polymers, I'm not saying pouring medium will also act or substitute as an adhesive. So um, I just grab some of that clear and put it down. Now I'm just kind of pushing in a second row of the fuchsia crystals. In the center I use that light topaz, which is really a yellow gold, which is the perfect pop in the middle and kind of brings the piece together. That little bit of red violet really makes a difference on the, the piece. And there you have it. There's a close up. I love how that chrome looks, that beautiful transparent sea glass green. Um, that silver looks very chrome to me, the dragon gold. I'm pretty happy with this. So here's a different angle from my phone after it dried the next day. I love how the colors are changing as my cam camera is scanning over the top. I'm getting blues, I'm getting turquoises, I'm seeing bits of purples, obviously green. It's pretty much what I was hoping for. And it's only my third attempt, so it's a little bit rustic for the dot art. But I will be happy to give this as a gift to a friend of mine. Next up, we have a bonus. Okay, I figured with this glass being uneven, I would do a little extra work. Here's what it looked like when it was dry. So those of you just want to see it looks dry and not see me actually do the work. I did it on a piece of black cardstock, the same two colors. So you can get an idea what it looks like when you're working flat. It's a little bit more precise. Uh, the pattern I used will probably make more sense. Those of you that are really interested in this or want to learn that pattern, I know I go and watch dotting art patterns all the time now. The stencils may give you a guide, but it's the artists that teach you one big dot, two little dots, or maybe make it look like a five on, uh, you know, a dice or something, or walking the dots but doing two rows. So 
Uh, I, I don't know how much I'll be doing this art, but watching Petra Youngblood and uh, Maria from Sweet Willow Designs, and I knew how pretty our Dragon Gold and True Silver was. I just couldn't help myself. I had to jump in and try this out. So I'm going to leave you guys with some silence here. I promise I won't be chattering your ear, your ear off. Uh, some people like music, some don't. But I'm going to be quiet for a while and just let you watch this. I do have it sped up so you can see uh, how it's done. And I can say one more time, love the Lazy Susan. If you didn't see any of the other two videos, one can, one thing I can say by, like I said, this is my fourth time here doing it on the paper, be confident in your dotting. Fresh dots give you, fresh dips into the paint give you very nice fresh dots if that's the look you're looking for. Unless you're using that walking technique, which will reduce the size of the dot as you're walking. Uh, the dot around or down an area but it's just be confident and practice because it's I mean I didn't do that bad of a job on this is number four but I did have the luxury of being able to work on a nice flat surface which I guess I should have practiced on to begin with but hey some of us just to, like to jump right in right So I found that when I was working on the flat paper, I was more aware of my spacing, even though I can see one very off center pair of dots. And yet on the paper, again, you just have to commit. There are some famous artists out there, I can't remember his name, who would always paint some kind of error or flaw. He would bury it in his painting somewhere as some kind of signature. So <laughs> I guess I can use the excuse of those two little dots. I don't know if you can find them that are not on center. <laughs> but hey, it's going to happen. 
course my goal is to show you how beautiful the paints are and inspire you to use them in other projects not necessarily the exact same projects I'm using of course Well, the pattern's starting to kind of take place here after those two rows of walking the dots on that true silver. It's starting to take shape.
Okay, so here comes that section that I was talking about the crisscross at the end and it's much easier to see on this flat black surface. So where your second row comes up, you've got the center dot. You've always got your center dot. Go one dot up where you've walked on the opposite side and walk three more dots down through. So it makes like little tails on the bottom of the true silver. It's much more visible, much more visible on this than it was on that glass bottle. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and share. And thank you, and see you next time.